Well, um, can can everybody hear me okay? Yeah. yeah. Can you? I mean, do I need to do I need to do this? Is this any better? No. No. <laughs> this, is, this is okay. Yeah. Um, fantastic. All right, folks. It is an honor to be here because there's some fantastic energy in this room. I love. When she stood up, and I mean, didn't you just light up the moment she stood up? You knew something was about to happen. We learned about the bird pooping on her head. Yes, that's awesome. <laughs> so, um, uh, my name is Isaac Cliff Morris, and uh, I'm a cardiologist. I've been practicing uh, cardiology for almost 20 years now, uh, mostly in the Hopewell area. I have done some work here in Chippenham, but um, I've done most of my work in Hopewell. And um, you know, I find it amazing that even with all of these years, that all of the stuff that I've been through in my life, all the stuff that everybody has been through around this table has brought us here together today. I think that's quite amazing. I think that, you know, we would we, be here and to learn from each other and to listen as if this was the most, most important uh, information that one could give. Microphone, maybe? Yeah. Oh, I got it. I got it. <laughs> Is this a little better? Yes. Yes? Yeah. Okay, good, good, good. Not that I'm going to say anything important, but that's okay. <laughs> and so, uh, so we're here today to try to learn a little bit about how the lungs affect the heart. So um, let's go ahead and get started, shall we? Well, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. Um, it, uh, anybody that knows anything about me knows that when I come to talk, I, I like to get people moving. <laughs> and so to set this up a little better, if, if you can, the people here on the inside rows, on the, on the inside rows, if you could go ahead and just turn your chair so that you're facing this direction, so you won't have to be turned, yeah, so now you're facing this way. Yes. <laughs> so that you're actually facing me. Because I have a little surprise for everyone at the very end. And uh, in order to make it flow, you, everybody has to be facing me so they can actually see me. Very good. Okay, awesome. Okay, so um, as they said, um, I spent my years in the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill. Go Heels, anybody? <laughs> Go Heels. I know, okay, all right, good. I never knew there was anybody that hated Carolina more than until I came up here. Uh, the, you know, the Cavaliers for, whew, those Wahoos, man. They, they just hope Carolina loses in summer. It doesn't matter what it is, because, you know. <laughs> you know, the Carolina Duke Rower is huge, but uh, man, up here, whew. So, um, but I just want to, um, I want to get some things straight before we get started. Um, you know, when I was at UNC, I had the opportunity of playing for the legendary Coach Dean Smith and a few other people that I don't know if anybody's ever heard of any of these folks. But um, this guy over here, Michael Jordan or somebody, anybody hear of him? <laughs> oh, okay, I, I don't know if anybody heard of him or anything. Um, uh, Kenny Smith is right there. He's now a commentator, um, a national commentator. And there's yours truly, Dr. Cliff Morris, right there. But, um, and uh, Coach, uh, Coach Dean Smith is right here, legendary Coach Dean Smith. But I do want to get everything, everybody straight on one point, okay? Um, when I played in Carolina, I did not play basketball with Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan played basketball with me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, all right. There's an important distinction to be made there. So now everybody, if you see me on the street, you go, oh yeah, that's the Dr. Morris. I mean, that's the, that's the person that, that Michael Jordan played with. Okay, you got it all right? It took me a long time in Hopewell to get everybody to say it right, but now actually people, <laughs> and now I have people that come up to me in the, in the office and say, I know you're Dr. Morris. Michael Jordan played with you. And I'm like, yes, that's exactly right, yeah. So, uh, so that's my that's my little claim to fame. So, what are we going to be talking about today, folks? We're going to be talking about the mighty red blood cell. You guys thought it was going to be all about the lungs and all that kind of stuff, didn't you? Well, I like to put things in a little different perspective for you. So, we're going to be talking about the mighty red blood cell. We're also going to be talking about how the lungs affect the heart, since that's the name of my talk. 
I'm going to give you nine keys to longevity. Raise your hand. You talked about the 100-year-old gentleman. You guys are going to learn how we got there today. Isn't that cool? <laughs> All right. And then um, my gift to you. I bring gifts today, folks. I bring gifts to every one of you today. All right. And if I do my job correctly, you guys will all have seven more minutes of added life today. How about that? Seven minutes of life. If I do my job correctly. Now, that means that you guys have to do your jobs, too. All right? So we'll see how that comes out. And then, of course, at the very end is the bonus. We make it to the end, so uh, we'll, we'll see. The bonus. Oh, my gosh. I like to build excitement. All right. So... You know, uh, this little guy right here is having a bad day. <laughs> I, uh, I like to start with this slide because probably 90, 80 to 90 percent of what I deal with in my office in some shape, form, or fashion is stress related. You know, um, the, the amount of stress that we are under here in this country is unbearable. And, you know, way back in caveman days, you know, when the saber-toothed tiger's coming at you, you <laughs> and you have to either fight or you have to run, you have um, these hormones that are released in your body. One in particular is called cortisol. Has anybody ever heard of cortisol? Cortisol is a steroid. It's a natural steroid secreted by your adrenal gland. And if the saber-toothed tiger's coming at you, this cortisol gets released, and all of a sudden you get this big sugar rush into your system to get you prepared to fight or run. Um, and your heart starts beating faster, and your eyes get big, and, and you start sweating, and the muscle gets shut, I mean, the blood starts getting shut into your muscles to get you ready, right? But then the saber the saber tiger goes away, or, you know, or you kill it, and now you have dinner, or something like You know, the stress level goes down, and the cortisol level goes down. But that's completely different from what's happening in this day and time. In this day and time, we are constantly under stress. We have our cell phones. I was over there checking my cell phone. I was waiting here. You know, we've got this. We've got this appointment. we got to be able to, what about tomorrow? Oh, gosh, oh, gosh, what about yesterday? I wasn't able to finish that yesterday. I mean, it's constant. So, therefore, there's constant, this constant cortisol surge all day long. And um, this poor, it's like this poor guy down here. You know, he's under a big cortisol surge, if you know what I mean. <laughs> And cortisol, when it's being secreted for long periods of time, day after day after day, wear on your immune system, they wear on your cardiovascular system, your central nervous system. And this is the reason why people that are under constant stress, like many of us in this room, and I say us because I'm included, I'm, I'm no different, are subject to infections because the immune system is lower, are subject to heart disease, lung disease, uh, diabetes, oh my goodness gracious, diabetes is one horrible uh, thing if it's not treated, if it's not controlled. But uh, across the country, it's just taking the country by storm. So today, uh, part of today is going to be trying to get that cortisol level down, all right? So, <laughs> I promise you at the very end, if I do my job right, that you have, we're going to do four quests. You have four quests that I'm going to put you on today. You didn't know you were going to have a quest today, did you? Did you know you were having a quest today, sir? <laughs> it's like, oh my God, this guy's crazy. All right, so uh, four quests, seven minutes. We're going to try to get back of life today. Seven minutes. All right, folks. I want to tell you about this beautiful thing right here called the red blood cell, the mighty red blood cell. And why do I call it the mighty red cell? Because um, it reminds me a lot of this wonderful poem by Rumi. And the poem goes, even, and this is in, in the, the, talking about the sun in relationship to the earth. <coughs> even after all this time, the sun never says to the earth, you owe me. Look what happens with a love like that. It lights the entire sky. It just makes you want to breathe the fresh air, doesn't it? What it's saying is that the sun is just being who it is, what it is. It's not trying to warm the earth. It's not trying to make the plants grow. It's not trying to do anything in particular. It's just being what it is. And isn't it marvelous that it's creating such a wonderful miracles? I mean, we're here today on this earth because the sun is up there giving the plants uh, sunlight, photosynthesis, and 
creates oxygen for us to breathe, and then of course we breathe it back to the plants and it goes around the circle. So all of you here are today because of sun, but sun's not trying to do that. It doesn't matter what you do today, the sun's gonna be there, it doesn't matter. Much of the same way as the red blood cell. Let me tell you about this little guy and why you guys wanna make sure to get this guy circulating in your body as much as possible. This little guy, you know what it does? It carries oxygen. I put a little oxygen cells on there now, all right? Oxygen. So here it goes. It's in your bloodstream, right? And it goes all the way up to your lungs and picks up oxygen and puts it on its back and it is carrying it in the bloodstream. And it carries it all the way down to your toes, right? And it drops it off. And it drops a little oxygen off to your lungs, it drops a little bit off to your kidneys, and a little bit off to your knee, a little bit off to every hair follicle on your being, right? Drops it off. And then, does anybody know what the little red blood cell picks up on the way back to the heart? Anybody remember back on the carbon dioxide? Did somebody pay attention to science back in school? <laughs> carbon dioxide. So then the little carbon dioxide hops on the little, little uh, red blood cells back and he carries it all the way back up, all the way back up to the lungs and drops it off. And of course you breathe it off, right? And then it picks up another oxygen and just been, and that's that's what it does. It doesn't care what you did, it doesn't care who what you know if you if you were mean to somebody, it doesn't care what you ate or anything. Well, I take that back. <laughs> I take that back. But it, it's not paying any attention. All it's doing is just being itself, and as a result of that, it's keeping us alive as we speak, just like the sun. So we would want to do everything we can to keep this little guy circulating. Isn't that right? Does that make sense? Okay. Okay. So uh, there it is, carrying oxygen. So. This is the cardio, now this is a bad slide, I must admit, but I'm gonna to try to guide you through this. Now this, this, this over here is the lungs here. Now the heart has two sides to it, as if I'm standing here, and here is the left side of my heart, and here is the right side of my heart over here, okay? All right, so, the, uh, Little red blood cell is traveling, traveling, traveling. It leaves the left side of the heart and it's coming around, it's coming around. Now it's going to the body. And it's dumping off all the oxygen to the rest of the body, to your kidneys and to your knees and to your fingers and toes and stuff. It dumps off all the oxygen and now it's coming back around this way, coming around the mountain and up to the right <laughs> side of the heart. And by the time it gets back up here, the reason this is a blue color is because blue, no oxygen. You turn blue, right? You guys don't know about that, do you? Okay. And so uh, you turn blue with no oxygen, right? So then it comes up to the lungs again and gets this wonderful, wonderful oxygen here, grabs it and takes it right back around in this way. And now it's red. You see the blood is red now. And it's really true. I mean, when I'm in the cath lab and I take a sample of blood that has oxygen, it's bright.